Hey folks, back out here again talking about gathering some wild foods. If you guys haven't yet, check out the Gathering Cycle of the Year, which is on the Finland Food Chain website. It's a whole chart of different plants you can gather um, and when they're going to be ripe and some uh, cultural information about uh, things uh, about when to gather them and that type of a thing that we've gathered from people in the area. So it's kind of a cool document and it's kind of a cool idea, right? To go through this whole gathering cycle of the year and um, talk about it and show you guys what's happening as the cycles are going through. So here we are, I'm down at the sugar camp this is where I've been down uh, cooking maple sap into maple syrup for uh, the last month, <laughs> month and a half, right? Um, and maple syrup season is done now. So I have got some finished maple syrup here. And now what I've got cooking in there is birch sap because now it's the birch sap season. But looking at the gathering cycle of the year, there's some other things that should be happening around this time of year. So one of the things we see is uh, leeks or wild brants. So I've looked around um, and it looks like they're still small, but we'll take a look at them. Um, also wild ginger root. If you know where it is, you have to kind of know where it's growing. You can go and find it this time of year and gather it and it's just as good as when it was in the fall. It's a really cool spice that we can use. Um, similar to ginger, although not related at all. <laughs> Strangely, it's uh, related closer to a uh, pine tree than it is to Asian ginger. But it tastes similar and it works similarly um, for upset stomach and that type of a thing. Um, there's sort of a general rule about gathering roots and in the early spring before plants start growing and in the fall after they've died back, those are a good time to get those types of uh, root medicines. So we'll take a look at that. Um, also another root vegetable, right? A, a root that we can dig is dandelion root. This time of year before they start growing too much is a good time to get those dandelion roots and they're almost a little sweet. You can uh, roast them and dry them for tea. Um, you can also slice them up and roast them and eat them for, uh, for food. So we might uh, take a look at doing some of that too. All right, let's uh, go look at some plants. These are the little ramps, the wild ramps. They like to grow in the swamp. They're just small still. Get a closer look here. There's other little plants that look similar, but you can always tell it's right if you take just a little piece of it. Oh, drop it. And you smush it up. And smell it, and it smells, it smells like garlic. They're kind of a cross between onions and garlic. All right, here we'll harvest just a couple of these wild ramps. They're really quite small for harvesting, but I'll get some so everyone can see. What they look like, they're going to get much, much bigger. If you wait out into the season, they'll get bigger and they'll get tastier. And, well, I don't know about it, tastier, but they'll be bigger. All right, let's talk about wild ginger. I've dug some out of the snow and mud here. The only way I ever would have known that this was here is because I remember from previous years, this is where it grew. So it's always important to be looking and observing and remembering where you see certain plants. You can see it's got just a little bit of a bud starting. This will grow into a plant and a flower, but this is the root. You can just keep following it back. It'll be a very long root. Really probably about as long as you're gonna have the patience to follow it. And here, see, usually where you find one, you find some more. Here's a whole bunch more right here. Right here and right here. And you can follow them along. They just go and go and go. All of that root is good, good medicine. They've got roots all along, so you kind of have to pry them off as you go. There you go, that's wild ginger. You can dry it and grind it and use it as a spice. You can use it fresh, you slice it up, you can pickle it. Um, it's really good. It's really good for your uh, for digestion, so for your stomach. It's really a good medicine and it's a, a good tasting uh, flavor that this is what our area tastes like. Now we've got another thing that's not on the uh, gathering cycles of the year, but it's something out of the garden. Um, it's sunroot or sunchoke or Jeruz Jerusalem artichoke. Um, so in the early spring, it's a good time to harvest these. They last over the winter and they grow even over the winter and become a little better and sweeter in the spring. So I'm going to try to dig one of these up and see how they're doing. That's the sunchoke. Jerusalem artichoke. Sunroot. 
All right, now we should talk about dandelions. Where's the best place to look for dandelions? In the front yard. Most front yards have some dandelions. Um, and they're pretty much everywhere usually, even if they're too small to see. Um, but right around now you can start seeing they'll turn green a little bit sooner than a lot of the other grass and things. So let's take a look and see if we can find any. We've got several good looking dandelion plants right here in the yard. I'll try digging some up so you can see how that looks. We're going to dig down as deep as you can. These roots are very long, and if you dig shallow, you won't get the whole thing. If you want, you could just dig it one shovel full and you'd just get that much of the root. That's okay too. Helps them grow back. Look at this. That's a big dandelion root. They're all over in your yard. Look, see there are several of them connected up and together. You pull all the dirt off, you can see it a little better. And these will clean up, slice up, and roast and have part of dinner. I'll get a few more. These little rosettes, these greens on the top, we can clean up and they're very good as well. So you can fry these up, mix them with other things put them in a salad. They're really good for you too. Lots of nutrients. Things you really need this time of the year in the spring. Another trick I like to do is in the spring when you're pulling out the weeds out of your garden before you start planting, a lot of times on the edges you'll have dandelions growing. Well, I don't think of this as weeding. I think of this as the first harvest of the garden. So here I go. I'll get some dandelions off the side of my garden bed here. There you go. More dandelion root. Now we've got all of the vegetables that I gathered cleaned up and in the kitchen. We've got the dandelion root. Here's the dandelion rosettes or crowns. Here's the Jerusalem artichoke or sunroot. Here are the wild ramps. And here is the ginger root. Now I'm going to peel the Jerusalem artichoke and then I'm going to chop it up, and I'm going to chop up the dandelion root so that we can roast them. Feed all of this good stuff to the chickens. Alright, these are ready for roasting. Now I'll add some bear fat and some wild ramp herb salt to season this and help it cook. I'll take this, put it in the oven at 375 degrees, and stir it every once in a while until it seems done. Alright, I'm going to use the wild ginger to season some wild rice. So first thing I have to do is cut it up. It's important to not cook this part. The plant itself and especially the flower can have some parts that can upset your stomach. We'll prepare to make wild rice. There's the ginger. Here's some locally harvested wild rice. Some more bear fat. And more of the wild ramp herb salt. You can see it's a green color. Almost gone. Good thing the wild ramps are almost back, huh? Now I just add water to this and I'll cook it. I didn't have a lot of wild ramp salt, so I'm going to add some of this garlic scape salt to the rice as well. Here I've got some bacon. Um, this is bacon from the pig we butchered last fall. Uh, you can get other uh, local bacon from local farmers as well. I'm going to cut this up and cook it and then candy it with a little bit of maple syrup right before it's done. Here's another lovely little plant that's starting to spring up in the garden. It's not a wild plant, but we have these walking onions or Egyptian onions. They grow as a perennial, um, and they're a great onion source in the spring. So I'll dig a couple of these up and we'll uh, add them to our dish. Now we have the walking onions all cleaned up. I'm going to cut them up and we're going to fry them with the bacon and the tops of the dandelion greens. 
Now we're just going to clean up these dandelion tops. Alright, at this point I'm going to add some maple syrup to the bacon so that it will candy. And I'll put it back on the heat until it starts to get sticky and done. Alright, now the maple syrup has been candied onto the bacon. Um, it looks like it's all ready to go, so we're going to add the walking onions. Put it back on the heat and let it cook for a little while. Alright, now those onions have had a chance to cook a little while, and I'm going to add the dandelion greens. I had them sitting in a pan of cold water that helps keep them firm and also allows any sand or dirt that may have still been in them to fall to the bottom so they don't it doesn't end up in the in the food. All right, I'll put this back on the heat and cook it for a little more. And there you go. That's about it. That's ready to serve. Go ahead and bring that into the people and let them eat. It's a dandelion onion and bacon salad. Delicious, right? all local ingredients. Alright, we've got the vegetables all roasted. They're ready to be thrown in the rice when it's done. While the rice finishes, I'm going to cut up the ramp to be a garnish on top of the rice. Now the rice is ready. Just got to add the roasted veggies and garnish it with the wild ramps and it'll be ready. Pretty good. I'm just going to add just a little bit of garlic powder that I made from garlic that we grew last year. And a touch more garlic scape salt. There you have it. We've got wild rice. We'll sprinkle it with, with the wild ramp garnish. And that had the wild ginger root cooked in with it. It's got the um, Jerusalem artichokes and the dandelion root that were roasted and then mixed in with the rice. Here's the dandelion salad. It's got the candied uh, bacon and um, it's got the walking onions in it. So this is all local ingredients, all extremely healthy and wonderful. I hope you guys try making some local food and I hope you keep following along and, and I hope you take a look at the gathering cycle of the year resource on the Finland Food Chain website. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or send us a message at the page, finlandfoodchain.org. Thank you. Bye.